Okay, so this is a radically different approach to, to drumming. I'm going to tell you a little about myself and how this came to be. It'll help you to understand what this is and if it's for you. Uh, when I was approximately 20 years old, I started to develop illnesses. Uh, they started coming one after another in succession. I didn't know it at the time. I had what is called an autoimmune disorder. It started up as psoriasis, which is a skin disorder. And um, unluckily, uh, my psoriasis, about 10% of people's psoriasis develop something called psoriatic arthritis. So we develop um, a rheumatoid arthritis, which is different than osteoarthritis. Okay, so what's all this medical stuff about? Well, let's just say the difference between rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is generally kind of a uh, wearing down of cartilage between joints, where rheumatoid arthritis is where your, your immune system has gone berserk and your immune system starts attacking your own body. Your immune system thinks that your body is an enemy. So my immune system started to attack my joints and started to make them uh, immobile, uh, disfigured. I got to the point where I was on crutches, or first a cane, um, or I should say before that, I was stumbling and fumbling, um, wearing uh, orthopedic shoes that were look like clown shoes and as my feet were so swollen and uh, there were days where um, I couldn't get out of bed at all. Then I went to a cane, then crutches, wheelchair. Eventually I was for the most part bed, bed ridden. Uh, I was becoming emaciated, meaning I was losing tremendous amounts of weight. Uh, even now, you see I'm thin, uh, I'm still probably 50 pounds less than what I was at, uh, before I got ill, uh, but I was down to, at one point to a skeletal weight. Um, I don't know how much I weighed at that time, but um, I was uh, skin and bones. And the, my immune system had attacked my lungs, my heart, my, my organs, um, pretty much every system and, and, and function of my body and everything in my body. Uh, ate away my flesh, my bone, my, uh, my uh, muscles, and the like. Okay, so um, I was at uh, in pain. That was just I, I, I don't really have proper words to just sort of describe it to you. Um, death was a welcome option, um, though I had a will to live. And uh, discomfort that was off, just off scale. There was no, there's no way to explain it. Um, I was seeing conventional doctors. And the doctors said that there was no chance for me that uh, I was going to die. And in essence, they sent me home to die. I did not accept their diagnosis. I chose to live. And it was a choice. I chose life. And I decided to break away from the allopathic system of um, disease, which would be conventional medicine. And I sought out conventional means. Led me into the holistic world. And in the holistic world, um, I discovered a lot about nutrition. I got a certification in nutrition, um, and I, I, I became a uh, kind of like a machine. I read every possible book uh, on nutrition conceivable, um, and I was able to retrace my steps out of disease. I am not fully healed, but I am a lot healthier a lot, meaning uh, a lot say not, not really the right two words. Um, um, it's almost borderlining on a miracle. And maybe it is a miracle. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> well, let's keep religion out of this or spirituality out of this for now, at least for now. Um, during that process, I had to learn how to change habits. And one of the common denominators of almost all people is anyone I've ever met, and I assume that means you as well, is that we all have difficulty changing, or as Jesus said, we all have feet of clay. I believe Buddha said something like, we are the mountain, meaning we change very slowly, we are resistant. So, 
I started to study inner healing technology systems uh, ways as well. Uh, I also had a childhood that was difficult, dysfunctional. So it probably led partly or wholly, whichever, to my disease, which at the time I did not know, nor did the conventional doctors um, at that time know either. Uh, the, at that time when I was sick, there was really no kind of like body, mind connection accepted whatsoever, though, where conventional medicine it's not, it's some, to some degree accepts this, to some degree or whatever. Um, I started studying things like, like uh, NLP, which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, and Emotional Freedom Technique, and Sedona Method, and Rationally Emotive Behavioral Therapy, and it goes on and on. Um, and it was um, a journey within that really made my life um, explode with peace and pleasure. Because I had to learn how to change habits, had to how to overcome resistance. And I'm the most resistant person in the world, procrastinating, uh, not wanting to change, not wanting to do. Okay. So um, right at the point where I was about to become a full-time professional drummer and enter the higher level of drumming, and my goal was to become, um, if not the, one of the best drummers in the world and um, um, make my way in the drumming world, I was taken out of the game, uh, right, right in my prime. So um, it's been a long path back, and now I'm entering uh, the drum world again uh, publicly. Um, it took a long time, but I'm back. And I hope that this gives you hope that wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever's happened, that there's always a second chance. And that's why I tell my story. Um, I did put myself through law school as a studio drummer, and uh, I am an I'm an entertainment law attorney. However, I'm also mostly uh, a body, mind, spirit teacher, and it uh, is my pleasure to tell my story to help to help give people hope so that they know that they can change almost anything. If you're alive, then there's a chance. Uh, there's a spark of life. There's hope. And it's never too late. And that's not a cliche. If you're 99 years old, or more, and you're watching this because you want to learn how to play drums for the first time, bravo and good for you. And go for it. Because if you live to be 110, if you're 99, well, after 11 years, you could be a kick-ass drummer. Or you could be 110 and not be a kick-ass drummer. Time's going to pass, God willing, if you shall live that long. And what you do with that time is up to you. Okay, so what's great about this drum system is that as you learn these inner technologies, let's call them, they can be applied to every area of your life. You can, for instance, apply them to your careers, to schooling, uh, to the way you operate in your career, your job, your corporation, your, uh, your profession, whatever it may be. Your relationships, um, to the relationships don't just mean our uh, intimate relationships. It can mean uh, your relationships with your family, your relationship with your with your um, the way you relate to your friends, um, your anyone. Right? You know, think about life. Is a lot of life about life is how successful life is. A lot is how we relate to others. How you relate to others is determined by how you relate to yourself. So as you learn to love yourself more, like yourself more. Get rid of resistance, fear, um, just blocks. You will learn how to become a freer, um, more loose person. And that can be used in so many ways in your life um, to make your life just a much better experience. And that's a beautiful thing. Right? It's not what we all want, a better experience, um, more freedom within, more peace. I think we could all agree that's the common denominator. Yeah, it's all nice and dandy to have more money and materiality and love and all that kind of stuff. However, all of that with no peace is meaningless. So, the primary goal, number one, is peace. I'll just sum it up as peace. Okay. Alright, so, um, while I was in my healing process, uh, I 
knew that exercise had to be part of it to bring my body from death to life. However, exercising for a cripple was difficult. I feel that I was um, spiritually led to a lot of things. Now, if you are agnostic or an atheist or something like that, it's completely fine. I'm not here to push any type of ideology or spiritual belief whatsoever on you at all. Um, I'm only going to use the word spiritual for me, and you can replace it with anything you want, or just take what works and leave the rest. So I was led spiritually to um, a lot of things, um, and one of them was Tai Chi. Tai Chi was my first experience with, um, I should say my first experience, it was my first real, real endeavor in healing my body with um, martial arts. Uh, tai Chi is a slow moving type of martial arts. It's a beautiful thing. It really is wonderful. If you've not tried it, you really should try it. Um, and it teaches a lot of how to properly move your body. I did it for years with a high level grandmaster, a world grandmaster. Uh, then it led to Qigong, which is a little bit of a different thing, kind of a tweaking, but very similar. Um, and uh, this further led on to later on to. Uh, uh, um, heavier levels of martial arts, uh, more of the uh, prototypical uh, ones, as my body was able to handle it. I do want to make clear that uh, prior to getting ill in my, um, my youth, my youth, I did study martial arts and uh, some boxing and wrestling and things like that, so I was always keenly interested in it. Uh, so it was quite natural for me to fall into this. Okay. So, um, I learned how to eat, I learned how to think, and learned how to exercise a lot through martial arts. My body started to become healthier. Okay. Um, I want to show you something so you can understand where this is coming from. Um, I'm actually going to take this off so you can see fully. Okay. My right hand, okay, this is fully open right now, so I'm going to turn it upside down, you can see. So my fingers, ah, they don't open all the way. Okay, and they go that way, and if you look at the knuckles, the knuckles are all screwed up, and they, my hand, I can't make a fist, or if I do, I have to go like that, and kind of, okay. And there's pain, and these ligaments, whatever. It's a mess. My other hand is well. These fingers, if you can see, these, this thing does not close all the way. If you guys play drums already, you know this is very important, so... That doesn't help, okay? My wrists, some days are okay, some days are not okay. Uh, sometimes my elbow, my, my shoulders and whatnot, I have to deal with, um, still have to deal with a lot of things, including having hands that are essentially rather non-functional and drum anyway, okay? So use what you got, okay? And don't worry about what you don't have, okay? It doesn't help. Um, so these techniques uh, led me to a place where I wanted to learn how to um, get back in the game of drumming. Um, I, I started to study um, with a lot of excellent teachers and uh, I became a, a warrior of learning and healing myself and I, I learned a basic principle to just not waste time. So uh, I always have something on, you know, there's a book on tape, um, even I'm cooking or something like that, I just don't waste time. I'm constantly absorbing information. Uh, so I realized when the advent of the internet came that there was this explosion of videos and DVDs and downloadables and books and whatnot on how to play drums by master drummers. And I started to go through all of them. Um, I'm not saying that I went through every single one of them, but I went through almost every single DVD and video and downloadable and book uh, that how to play the drums, pretty much. Uh, by becoming ritualistic, meaning uh, I made it my point to make myself a promise that I would not go to sleep until I played an hour a day, minimally. That was my threshold of pain. 
Something you learn in NLP is the two P's, pain and pleasure. Everything we do is either um, a pursuit of pleasure or avoidance of pain. So for me, using my stick as a as a as a as a, a guide, so you can see. Um, okay, let's say it's down here, and you can only play five minutes a day, and that's where you feel comfortable. When I say to you, can you play ten minutes a day, and you go, yuck, I just don't feel good about it. What should you do? Play ten minutes a day? No, because it's associated to pain, and anytime we link any behavior to pain, we're not going to do it, okay? So we want to drop back down to five minutes. For me, an hour was where I could tune in to myself and say, an hour, when I thought about an hour and a half, I went, ugh, it's just not gonna happen. So, rule 101, don't do anything painful, but you can't do anything painful long term. It will shut down. Okay, if you get motivated by this video, for instance, or tape, whatever you want to call it, um, it will last for a while, but it will wear off. Wear off. Okay, so practice only where you are. Now, will it change in time from five minutes sometimes to ten minutes to twenty minutes down to five minutes down to whatever? Yes. The golden rule is to play minimally one minute per day. Now, if you're saying to me, or yourself, that you can't play one minute per day, you're probably not being fully honest with yourself or me. A minute a day is not going to give me enough benefit. That is not true. What's going to happen is, if you play a minute per day, let's just say, for instance, for 30 days. Now, you tell me what will happen. You're probably thinking right now, yeah, if I did a minute per day for 30 days in a row, I'm going to be a better drummer than I was before I started. That is correct. And you're going to feel better about yourself. You're going to have more physical prowess. You're just going to be more confident physically. You're going to have more physical ability. And then if I said to you, can you do two minutes a day? That resistance or fear or block that you had at going two minutes, you'll say, yeah, I could do two minutes. And after a month, I'll say, how about leaping to five minutes? When you listen to yourself and tune in, you'll say, yeah, I feel cool about that. I could do five minutes a day. Yeah. And then 10, yeah, no problem. And et cetera, et cetera. Okay, got the concept, right? What happens if after a while, I, for some reason, freak out and I want to go down to a minute again for a day? That's fine. So the rule is, the guideline is, to always play minimally one minute per day. And you're not allowed to go to sleep until you do one minute per day. I think we all can agree that we all can do that, right? Anything above that is icing on the cake, right? Okay, the old cliche. Okay, so. Pain, pleasure, right? When I started getting to the point where I could uh, function reasonably physically, and I started to see that I could get back into the game of drumming on a serious level. Not only did I study martial arts and NLP um, separately to heal my body, it occurred to me that these things, so these mental systems I was, I was working on, and these uh, physical systems, if you will, uh, that they could be applied to the drums. I was studying all these uh, people who had put out various forms of uh, types of drum uh, material. And what I got from them was that generally they were incredibly positive, uh, well-intentioned. However, uh, uh, there was this kind of repetitive pattern after a while. It was kind of like a lot of rudiments and, um, you know, just patterns, literally patterns of doing patterns, right? You know. Uh, so I started to feel that I was limited by these teachings, and I wanted to go beyond. Well, it just occurred to me uh, that I could do more but by tapping into my mind first. Through my experience and through my learning 
of people much wiser than, wiser than I. Our minds are infinite. We have in, infinite capacity in our minds. So it occurred to me, hmm, what if I tapped into that infinite well of capacity within, in our mind, or just within ourselves? What would happen if I drilled in and let that out, that, uh, that light, that energy? Um, as uh, Jesus said, the kingdom is, is within. Okay, uh, again, not pushing Jesus on you or anything else, okay? Uh, just just uh, mentioning him as a teacher. Uh, well, what happened was I started to explode. Um, I was learning exponentially faster and better. Um, and then I started to think, well, I was studying these ancient methods, this methodology of bodily movement, which is what the martial arts are. It's not really about violence so much that, uh, which, you know, certainly one, in my view, and you may have their viewpoint, that's fine has a right to defend oneself. But that's not really the point. The point is really to become um, more learned in, in, uh, in, 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 in your body, how your body moves, how to move your body, uh, getting in shape, um, and such. Uh, and, and last resort, last resort, to defend oneself if necessary, only if necessary. Never, of course, obviously be violent unless it's absolutely critical needed. Okay, so I started to think about the drums and I said, well, this is the instrument above all that has the most, probably is the one that has the most bodily movement. Since there was so much bodily movement involved, I started to think about how we can move our bodies in a more efficient way, a looser way, um, in a way that was more expressive as we moved our hands and even how we move our legs and feet and wrists and fingers and such. So I put together the mental technologies such as NLP, um, releasing blocks and fears and whatnot, which are really self-imposed limitations, with the ergonomics of the martial arts. And um, I applied it to myself at first. And I found myself just really just exploding with um, more capability, and I couldn't believe how fast it was. Then uh, I started teaching about 10 years ago, and my students at that time, I was teaching them through kind of standard methodology. And since it was this like kind of alternative processing of uh, information and uh, bodily movement and such, uh, was working for me, I said, well, okay, if these guys are open to it, let me try it on them. And I told them what I was thinking, and they were excited. So, so okay, let's try it. And they, too, achieved just massive, gigantic results. The giant within them also was being unleashed, and the ancient wisdom of bodily movement and martial arts was also being unleashed, and these two combined just created, like, you know, hydrogen weapon type of uh, success in drumming, you know, it's exciting, it makes me uh, just feel passionate even talking about it right now, because it's really so cool, and it works. Okay, so, um, this can carry over, I said earlier, into uh, uh, other parts of your life, is as you learn these things by playing drums, uh, you learn how to do things in life better, right, which is a beautiful thing. Okay, so, during this process, to close this introduction, uh, I started to look at all this voluminous amount of material that I had studied and these wonderful teachers I had uh, in person. Uh, and the rudiments, if you don't know what those are, if you're a beginner, there are rudiments that we have um, in the drum world. Uh, I started to think how music broke down as drummers and I developed a language that we're going to learn in the system. This is a just a beautiful language. Uh, think of it as if you're played football or baseball or something like that, you see the field a lot more clearer. You understand what you're doing. See, if you understand 
you can do. The more you understand, the more your mind opens up, the clearer you see the field. For instance, if you were playing football, you would see where everything is all at once. Sometimes if you played sports, you've been in the zone, whether it's golf or baseball or darts or pool, um, football, whatever, right? You had time, at some point you must have played something. And you felt like you were in that zone where you just couldn't miss, okay? But you just had a really good day. You had that positive feeling where you know, you felt just tremendously positive. Okay, you, you saw things, you heard things just amazingly, you felt things that were just so powerful, right? Yeah, well, it's that kind of feeling. Um, so I started to develop this language. So we're going to call it a language of, of drumming. It's different than anything you've ever been introduced to uh, because I developed it. And it's, um, it's going to help you to, to play... Uh, so much better, so much faster, um, which in, in a way it incorporates all of the rudiments without actually playing the rudiments. For instance, like a Rademacue. If you're a drummer, uh, if you're not, we'll get into this stuff later. Uh, you know, but think about it. When's the last time you played a Rademacue on you know, the kid or you know, whatever it may be? Okay? Generally, this doesn't happen unless you're in a marching band or something. And by the way, I was in marching band as well. Um, this is uh, where I started. I started when I was about five years old, and I started in uh, uh, the I started at home with uh, teachers. I saw our, uh, Buddy Rich on television, and my dad had a, a, t a teacher in my home the next week. He was very gracious. Um, but I also, in school, went into the marching band because uh, it was a great learning experience, kind of like a boot camp of drumming. So yeah, so. Um, so this um, language of drumming is really just a, a beautiful thing, okay? And uh, that language can help you to see, to feel, to hear so much better what's going on and uh, make you so much a better drummer and learn quicker and so much faster. Yeah. Okay, so that's our introduction. We thank you. And uh, you want to buy this video series, you're going to see a link below. Just click. It's uh, one of the best things you've ever done for yourself, I promise. And, uh, yeah, new life, new drumming, a lot of beautiful things are coming. So we appreciate it. We'll see you in a drum series.